Since the Chinese rover Chang'e 5 landed on the moon, there has been increasing evidence that this celestial body is quite different from what we have long imagined. Especially within its interior, the moon appears to hide treasures that we have not had the slightest idea about. The shocking discoveries of the rover could change our world forever. What exactly the rover found deep within the moon and why this discovery might potentially spell the end of the climate catastrophe, we will examine now. Stay tuned, as we are about to forever change your perspective on this celestial body. What did Chang'e 5 discover on the moon? The Chang'e 5 mission landed on the moon on December 1, 2020, after a 23-day journey through space. The dual probe had been launched from the Wenchang spacecraft launch site of Hainan province of China. This is the same site from where predecessor probes Chang'e 3, numerous satellites, as well as the components and supply flights for the Chinese space station have been launched. After successfully separating from the orbiter, Chang'e 5's lander touched down in a lunar area that scientists called Oceanus Procellarum. This region near the lunar equator is a vast, flat area on the far side of the moon, characterized by its extreme breadth and the proximity of the 5,250-foot-high Mons Rümker. The objective of the Chang'e 5 mission was very clearly defined. The nearly 8-ton probe was to collect samples from the lunar surface and bring lunar rock back to Earth for the first time in 40 years. For the very first time in human history, this mission was to extract samples from the deep layers of the Moon. In recent years, scientists had come to realize that the Moon might be very different from what we had long thought. It could even be possible that the Moon harbors a large reservoir of mineral resources that could solve our energy problem. After successful drilling, the lander sent the samples back to its orbiter via the ascent module, and the return journey to Earth began after only 14 Earth days. The mission was celebrated worldwide as a great achievement of Chinese space travel, clearly elevating China into the ranks of the great space-faring nations of this Earth. The return of the samples was eagerly anticipated by international researchers. We can already reveal this much. The hopes for new groundbreaking insights about the Moon were more than fulfilled. Water in Glass? On December 17, 2020, the return capsule entered Earth's atmosphere and landed successfully in the sparsely populated expanse of Mongolia. As soon as the samples were secured, the experts got to work. With great anticipation, it was expected whether the drillings would confirm the existing theories about the Moon's creation or if the Moon's interior would reveal an entirely different truth. Scientists believe that a planet the size of Mars collided with the Earth more than 4 billion years ago, creating the Moon. During the collision, a part of the Earth broke off and was covered with molten rock. Until now, it was assumed that the temperatures were so high that all the water evaporated forever. The Moon was considered a parched celestial body that was slowly shrinking or, in other words, drying out. In the recent months and years, telescopes and probes have found large deposits of water ice in craters near the lunar poles. The narrative shifted, and everyone started questioning where the ice on the Moon came from and why it had never been noticed in more than 50 years of intense lunar exploration. NASA plans to send astronauts near the poles as part of the Artemis mission in the coming 10 years. Once there, the astronauts are to determine whether the water deposits on the Moon can be utilized. In a planned permanent station on the Moon, the water could provide for humans, grow plants, and also be used to produce fuel. Now, the discovery of Chang'e 5 could completely overthrow all these plans, as this rover has discovered the seemingly impossible on the small, inconspicuous celestial body. Large quantities of water, and that's everywhere on the Moon. In the drill samples, researchers from the Chinese Academy of Sciences found an unusually high density of tiny glass particles. These tiny glass crystals have most likely formed when meteorites struck the Moon. Hitching a ride on the comet could also have brought water to the Moon, which is now frozen at the poles. Upon closer examination, the impact glass beads revealed another secret that simply left researchers speechless. Because inside the beads they found, water. Each particle only contains a tiny portion of water, but in bulk, the water deposits on the Moon are enormous. Can you imagine that? 
large amounts of water on the moon? That also sounded unusual to us, but the Chinese study leaves no doubt. In each individual crystal, there are 2,000 parts water to 1 million parts. So, as you can see, it's really small, and the beads are not even a millimeter in size. But the bulk is made up of water, and now brace yourselves, because when the concentration is converted to the entire moon, there are 2,000 kilograms of water in every metric ton of lunar soil. Under Earth conditions and in liquid state, this is pretty much equivalent to 2,000 liters, which is a whole lot. The likelihood that these glass particles are even distributed across the entire moon is high. After all, the entire moon has been bombarded by comets, asteroids, and meteorites for billions of years. This implies that the moon could be abundant in water from the equator to the poles. Future manned moon missions, therefore, wouldn't necessarily have to land at the poles and then laboriously attempt to utilize the water ice there. The water from these beads can be easily isolated through heating, thus providing moon settlers with fresh water anywhere on the celestial body. In further investigations, Chinese researchers were even able to demonstrate that the water enclosed within the lunar crystals was once produced by the sun. The theory suggests that positively charged hydrogen atoms from the solar wind made their way into the glass beads and mixed with the oxygen contained within them. Studies of the different types of hydrogen atoms in the samples have shown that these glass beads can also release part of their hydrogen charge at high temperatures when they are heated by solar radiation. The total amount of water wealth in the form of impact glass beads is estimated to be around 298.7 billion short tons, according to current estimates. In 2010, NASA estimated the water quota at the Moon's North Pole to be 661.4 million short tons. Compared to previous assumptions that the Moon was bone dry, this is truly enormous. Even compared to our Earth, the abundance of water is impressive. Our blue home of water and rock is estimated to hold approximately 1.47 quintillion short tons of water. Now you're probably wondering if there could ever be a time when this moon ice melts, or if the moon could be transformed into a landscape with rivers, lakes, or entire oceans through a chemical or mechanical change in the water glass beads. Of course, we also asked ourselves this question and investigated the matter. Although such ideas would be fantastic, it will unfortunately hardly be possible to let water flow on the moon's surface. The moon has virtually no atmosphere, extreme temperatures, and only very low atmospheric pressure. Water can only liquefy under certain conditions, and these simply aren't present on the moon. Since the moon does not have a particularly high density and has only a very weak magnetic field, it's also not expected that changes will occur here in the future. However, it's a completely different story with Mars, where liquid water once flowed. Traces of erosion have confirmed this multiple times, and audacious plans for terraforming aim to transform particularly the frozen Mars water at the poles into liquid water and thus into seas and lakes through an artificially induced greenhouse effect. However, experts also doubt here whether this would ever be realistically achievable. But let's go back to the moon and the fascinating findings of the Chinese astronauts. The glass beads revealed other things besides just water. The latest exciting discovery could soon trigger a real rush to the moon. Could our energy problems be solved with this? The samples collected by the Chinese space probe are unique. Taken from deep layers, they are about a billion years older than all the samples collected from the surface by astronauts during the American Apollo program. Most likely, these glass beads have been formed predominantly over the last two billion years through massive meteorite, asteroid, and comet impacts. To generate the necessary temperatures, impact dimensions are needed that are roughly comparable to the asteroid that wiped out the dinosaurs on Earth about 68 million years ago. As a relatively small celestial body, the Moon has been exposed to massive cosmic influences throughout its developmental history, and it's a wonder that the Moon has survived these bombardments so well. Researchers believe that this is due, among other things, to its low density and the thick cushioning layer of dust. The Moon's turbulent life could have produced a whole range of peculiarities from which we may benefit enormously in the future. Chang'e 5 found another crystal in the lunar rock 
and it could be significant because this moon crystal is made of a substance that was previously completely unknown. Researchers were amazed and dumbfounded at the same time when they noticed that this structure has a crucial component for nuclear fusion. For those not quite familiar with nuclear power, it's worth mentioning at this point that Earth's energy problem would be solved as soon as we have the possibilities for nuclear fusion. So far, we have used the principle of nuclear fission to meet our enormous energy hunger. However, resulting radioactive waste has become a massive problem. In nuclear fusion, light atomic nuclei are fused into heavier nuclei. This releases a far larger amount of energy than nuclear fission, and the residues are radiation-free. For decades, physicists worldwide have been working on this technology, but so far without success, because the pressure, and therefore the energy input necessary to make the nuclei fuse, exceeds the energy gain. The problem would be solved instantly if we could find a mineral or an atom that inherently has an increased readiness for fusion. And that is exactly what has just happened. The isolated phosphate mineral was named Changuset Y in honor of the mission and the Chinese moon goddess Chang'e. Future research at the Beijing Research Institution of Uranium Geology will show whether the fusion-ready helium-3 isotope will be usable on Earth. So, could it soon be that mining begins on the moon, spacecraft bring rock to Earth on a daily basis, and our planet can take a breather for the time being? Well, we don't know that yet. The Shang-Yu-6 mission is set to collect further samples from the far side of the moon starting in 2024 and bring them back to Earth. The developments are currently being watched closely, and of course, NASA has also taken notice. Experts have calculated that the entire U.S. can be powered for a year with about 27.6 short tons of helium-3. This easily corresponds to the cargo volume of a space shuttle. Helium-3 from the moon is estimated to have an economic value of $3 billion per short ton. In fact, this discovery could trigger a gold rush and attract many nations and companies to the moon. Some major energy corporations have already shown interest to NASA in investing money in future space missions. This could mean that NASA's Artemis program gets a significant boost. We say goodbye to you now and finally want to know what you think about the moon as a resource for Earth. Do you believe it's only a matter of time, or perhaps even fate, that the solutions to our energy problems are found on the moon? Or do you believe renewable energies or free energies, like Tesla wanted to make use of, would be better alternatives?